Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining Fort. So, if you have watched my other video, you'll have an idea of how Fort runs and what the rules are for the game. I'm going to have a playthrough for two players. The setup for three or four players is identical to the setup for two players. The names of which cards you get as your star cards are on the back of your board. So, to start with, each player takes five cards. Okay, out of those five cards, this one's not going to do anything. It'd be really good to get this one in the lookout because it's got two spades, but I can't actually do anything with that one. These two cards are identical to each other and allow me to move forward on the fort, but I'm going to have to have stuff to be able to do that movement. And that allows me to add a copy of my rival's stuff to my bag and my rival doesn't have any stuff. So neither of those two are, are good at the moment, which leaves me with these two. So this one would allow me to take a stuff for each of that suit that I'm playing. This one can count as that suit. Or this one allows me to take two stuff, but the other player can also take two stuff. And this allows me to trash a card that's in my hand or in my discard pile. Uh, I think at the moment it's probably actually worthwhile playing that, which means that just me, not the other player, is going to be able to take stuff times marking so i'm going to get two items for doing that i think i'll take pizzas these three cards then get placed in my yard and i take one of the available cards which would be his cards in his yard which aren't there aren't any one of these three cards or one of the face down cards i think at the moment it's probably actually worth taking penny because she's got some points on it and these points are actually really vital and important to remember that they exist and to do something about. Okay, so we replace the park and we jump over to this side. This guy could play this card, which will allow him to take goods times three and wouldn't allow the other player to do anything. Uh, he can't move up the fort at the moment because he doesn't have any goods. Yeah, it's probably actually worthwhile playing playing cards like that, which gives him three of goods. So he's going to add probably two of each. They then go into his pile. He selects one more card and he likes the idea of this card. He really wants to get it in there though, but he'll grab that and put that in his yard. We now go back over to the other player before we do, we deal out ourselves five cards so we know what we're running with for next time. The other player takes any cards that are left in his yard and throws them down into his discard pile, refill the park, and we keep going. He has drawn that, which will allow him to move forward on his fort with those two products. So it's probably going to be good to play that one. So he'll play that, spend the two pizza, that moves him forward. These all go into his yard so they can be picked up by other players. But because he's moved to here, he gains one of these end game points. So let's have a look at them. At the end of the game, score one point per this suit that you have, which includes in the lookout and here and everywhere. Sleep over at the end of the game, score eight points if you have the most cards. If tied for the most, score four points. And this one, at the end of the game, score one point per book card that you have. Uh, I'm not seeing them. Ah, oh, there's one. There's the book cards. Uh, he thinks that he might actually take that card and just go for the most cards total. He adds a card into his hand and he thinks it's probably worthwhile taking that one because that's also got the points on it. The card played could be followed by this player. If he plays that icon, he could play this one, which will allow him to upgrade his fort. And he thinks he'll actually do that. So he's gonna play that one to follow the action. And he will also use one of each, which pushes him forward one. He likes the look of that one because he thinks he's probably going to get the most of those cards, or at least that pushes him in one direction and he can see one at the moment. 
So he has four cards left. It's now his turn. So this card hasn't been picked up by anyone, so it goes back into his discard pile. He has four cards. Now what he's able to do is he could upgrade. If he plays this, that will allow him to upgrade because he can use this one to just use those two products. Or if he uses this one, he'll get one more pizza and it'll enable him to trash a card alone, get him one point for doing that. He thinks, no, he thinks he's going to play this one, but he's only going to use the bottom action. So that's these two good. So a blue and a yellow minus one. So he doesn't need to worry about that third good to be able to upgrade that. That's now being played. That allows him to take one of these perks and he thinks that he'll take this one. So he just keeps that beside there. What that allows him to do is my pack can hold two extra resources. So at the moment, he could keep three resources in there. With that, he can keep five. And these other three cards go out into his yard. He then chooses what to grab and he thinks he's going to grab that one. And we move back over to the other player. The other player doesn't have any cards left over. So he should have done this. Uh, because I'm the only player, it's really hard to kind of keep track of this. This should be happening at the end of his turn. So he takes the five cards. He could have spent a glue card from his hand, but he doesn't have any good, so there's no use in actually looking at that. So he takes the five cards. This player also should be doing the same. So shuffle up, five cards. Okay. These cards come into his discard pile and we come over here. So these ones allow him to add a copy of his rival's pack, but his rival doesn't have anything in his pack. So they're no use to him and he can't go up the fort because he doesn't have any uh, goods. That one same, doesn't have any goods. In fact, the only card he can use is this one. He doesn't have any wild cards there. So it's just the one card being played. And what that does is add a card from his hand to look at, so he'll add this one because there's two pitched on there and that's the only real good use for those ones is go into the lookout. Then he gets victory points multiplied by the number of cards in his lookout. So there's one card in the lookout, which means this card is now worth one point. These other three cards should go down there, but one of them has a star in it, so it comes to the discard pile as well and the other two go out. This guy is able to follow that action if he has a card to use and he does in fact he'll use this card to follow that action so that he can put this card into his lookout and that then puts a wild card in his lookout as well as a crown so now this player's turn so the three cards come in okay this player is going to play that card he'll do the bottom part first which is take two blue or two toys and then the top part, which is move a good from your stuff into your pack for each of these cards. Now he's got a wild there, so it actually counts as two, so he can move two of his toys into his pack. The other two cards can go there, except one of them has a star, so it doesn't go there. And he then chooses a card to add on. I fear that this player didn't do that last turn, so he'll do it first, and he'll grab that one. Now we can do over here. This guy's going to get extra points at the end of the game for having these markings. So he'll grab that one and do so five cards. That's the fifth card there. And they become the draw stack. Okay, coming over here. We should have done this. I, I do keep forgetting to draw early, so please forgive. These two cards come into the discard pile because I haven't been picked up by anyone. He doesn't have any goods to put into his backpack so these two cards are no good to him he can take two goods he could trash a card he doesn't want to because he's getting points for having the most cards at the end of the game that might be his best one to play actually so he's going to play this card with that wild as a backup and then there's another two of that same suit there so he's actually getting one two three four blue markers and then he gets to add cards from his hand to his lookout. He could add four cards if he wanted to add them all in. He can only keep two cards in his lookout. So he thinks at the moment that he won't do that uh, because they're some pretty good cards 
uh, and he'd really prefer to have wilds over there rather than anything else. So those cards have been used. These cards go to his yard so the other player can pick them up if he wishes. This card player then adds a card and he thinks he'll add that card to his pile. This player is able to spend a shovel suit but doesn't have any of them so he can't do anything with that. So we move on to his turn, discard, discards. He thinks it's probably worth his while to play that card with the other one behind it. And so each of these wilds counts towards that type, which means there's three pizzas coming in. He then gets points for how many things he has in his pack. So he gets two points. Those cards have been used. And once again, these go out. He will choose a card. He thinks it's worthwhile grabbing that one because he'll get extra points at the end of the game for having extras of those. Look, I think that gives you an idea of how Fort runs. The game will continue on until one of these markers gets to 25 or one of these markers gets to the end or that deck runs out. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.